All right, practice is over for the Costa FLW Series Central Division event here on Kentucky Lake. We're down in Paris, Tennessee with Todd Castledine. Todd, you're fresh off a top 10 finish at Dardanelle with the season opener for the Central Division. And uh, here at Kentucky Lake, um, well, backing up at Dardanelle, you threw a frog a lot. And you told me last time you were at Kentucky Lake, there was a pretty good frog bite you had going last year. I'm curious, right off the bat, you are the striking pop and perch designer and frog man right now. Is that going on out here right now? It's going on. It, it, I didn't think it was going to go on at first. Uh, I went two or three days without a bite, and then uh, I finally kind of figured something out. It's it's real. In, I wouldn't say it's inconsistent. I, I can catch them on it, but I, it has to be the perfect situation. But then you can call you know call your shot. Okay. Now that popping perch you told me it's on its way to market pretty soon. We should be able to get our hands on it before long. Uh, we're gonna get to see you throw it a little bit around this week then. Right. I mean, ho hopefully I don't mess mess one up. I've been kind of <laughs> dealing with about two or three of them for the past month. So I mean, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping I don't, I don't lose one or something. Gotcha. Well, back to this tournament then, and then the fishing. I mean, there's a lot of talk that this could be primarily a shallow bite, but it's Kentucky Lake, and we're starting to creep into that post spawn period. And on Kentucky Lake, post spawn means ledges. So I'm curious, from what you've seen out there in practice, how far along are they? Well, you know, I've only been here one other time in the springtime, so I'm not going to be the expert, you know, springtime deal. But from what I think, it, I think it's totally still a pre-spawn deal and just now spawning. Okay. Uh, something tells me that these lakes really don't care about moon phase, water temp, any of that stuff. When the water rises, that's when they'll go spawn. And I think they go do it all at once. And I've literally seen in the past three or four days, hundreds you'll, you'll go into a pocket and then the next day there'll be 30 of them up there so i mean they're moving up every day i haven't seen any fry or anything so okay. i don't think there's a i'm not saying there's not a post bomb but <laughs> right. i don't think there's a, a a major i think the guys if they're catching them out there deep might be catching them pre-spawners okay you're known as uh, a great sight fisherman obviously you've had a lot of tournament success doing that can you sight fish here is it clear enough to do it consistently the, it's clear enough to do it the consistent part that's what i'm unsure about uh you know they're uh, they're different up here. They're they're spooky. They're weird. They don't want to be shallow. Like where I'm from, they live shallow. Mm -hmm. Here it's like man, they don't ever even want to go up there. So it, it seems like um, females just don't want to push up there. And they either if you see one, it's either on the bed spawning or it's away, and it's, they're hard to catch. So is it more of a, an opportunity thing when you when you do see one that maybe you think is catchable, you can do it, or is it something you think you could go out there and start sight fishing as as your plan tomorrow? You could. I, I don't know if it would last for three days. Okay. So, yeah, it's going to be more of an opportunistic uh, deal. But with that being said, you know, um, I think the weather conditions, you know, a lot of lakes, if it's cloudy, if it's windy, you can still do it. I think you kind of have to have almost near perfect conditions here to do it. Okay. So it's going to be one of those deals that I think it's going to be if you can catch two or three on it, you know, throughout the day. That's the that might be the difference. Okay, now you mentioned obviously the conditions having to be right. You also mentioned uh, water level is important here. And the, the Tennessee River does fluctuate quite a bit throughout the seasons and even short term. We had a big thunderstorm that rolled through here today. Was that enough, you think? To, did it change the water at all? Did it dirty any areas up? Or? I don't think it dirty anything up. Um, places are either clear or they're not. And I don't think I've seen wind not even affect stuff. I, it's weird, I, I believe this is kind of the perfect water level to sight fish. I think okay. if it's too low, it's gonna to be too hard. And if it gets too high, they get too far up in the bushes. But like I said, I mean, I, I still wouldn't, I'm not planning on doing it except in a couple places and, and really just to catch a big one, you know? Okay. Well, there's 160,000 acres of water out here. Plenty of room for, I think, 205 or so boats to spread out. Do you have in mind that you're gonna run a bunch of water or have you sort of dialed in an area and you don't have to say the area but have you dialed in pretty specific where you're going to be i've dialed in like two areas that I, i'm pretty much gonna i hope to stay in you know for the first i have a kind of a weight set in mind okay. and i hope i'm close to that yeah, weight like in the this it, man you know normally it's 25 if it's offshore i i could be totally wrong but like anywhere between 18 and 20 i think is going to be phenomenal for the first day uh like i said this is kentucky lake so it could prove me wrong yeah. and it's getting better every day i've been here it's gotten better okay so uh i believe if i if i had somewhere around 18 i'd probably leave and probably go look for one or two and try to get that the right one, one. right okay. well the tournament results kind of back that up you know early 
early spring here. Uh, there were mid to upper 20 limits, but I think the last BFL took around 21 pounds to win. That was just a couple of weeks ago. So you might be right on track there with what it might take. Uh, but hey, we're gonna see how it goes here. Uh, some changes going on. Spring, there's always changes. And on Kentucky Lake, uh, things happen really fast here. Those fish seem to get up quickly and get out quickly. So we might time this right to see a, a shallow showdown. Watch for Todd Castleman, because if that's what happens, he's gonna be in the hunt. All right, we heard from uh, Todd Castledine, a guy who's kind of hoping for that shallow sight fishing deal to happen. Tom Reddington, last year's champ. Tom, you seem a little uneasy because last year you had it made, the fish were coming to you, <laughs> you were fishing the way yeah. you wanted with your electronics offshore, and they were funneling in, and you won the tournament. <laughs> Practice hasn't gone that way this time, has it? No, totally different. It's earlier on the calendar, a couple weeks, and I think it's Mother Nature's calendar is a lot uh, earlier as well. What kind of water temperatures are you seeing and you know how far away do you think we are from those first post-spawn schools really being caught? Yeah, the uh, first couple of days I saw it about 62, 65. The warmest I've seen now is 70, but most of it's still mid to upper 60s. And I honestly, it's going to be warm. It's been warm this week and I kept on just checking. I mean, I had to check. You had a lot. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, with those Garmin's, our electronics, you can see if they're there, it's not a guessing game. You don't have to fish them. I mean, they're just not there. They're not that nobody's going to find them, but uh, they're just not out there. And I think it's one of those cases that really, it's it's a good two, three weeks away. I mean, it's okay. it's more of a spring deal than a summer. So probably not that likely that we're going to see it develop as the tournament goes on even. Um, do you think it's going to be a, a quote unquote shallow bite, or do you think there's some sort of in-between things happening that might, might produce a winning weight or even some top 10 weights. It's interesting with this and it, you know, I call it the creep. There's a, like last year, the water was up. It was in the bushes. Everybody thought shallow, shallow, shallow. All the local talk have been shallow. So you see all the boats, they start out, they're in the, uh, they're in the backs of the creeks. They're not seeing much. And all of a sudden they start creeping out towards the main lake. And yep. by the start of it, they're fishing main lake points. A few of us were out in the, the main river and we caught them. Well, this year it won last time that way. So everybody starts out in the main river. They're idling yep. the, the stuff, me included. There's nothing there. And all of a sudden the creep starts happening and they go to main lake points and they go to secondary points. And the next thing you know, they're in the backs of the creeks. And to me, that's the best indicator that, yeah, it's, it's a back of the creek deal. There could be, especially down by New Johnsonville, the water's a little warmer there, it's stained. Okay. Those fish just live shallower. And uh, there I could see a ledge, and somebody like a Randy Haynes, who classically, like in Ufala a couple of years, we were all shallow. Yeah. He finds, I mean, he's he can find them. He's got a radar can. for you, he just knows. Yeah. He's incredible, yeah, and the guy, I mean, I've never seen anybody that wants to win as much as him. I mean, that guy, he couldn't care less about third, seconds, yeah. top tens. I mean, he just wants to win it. So if they're out there, Randy's gonna okay. catch him. If Randy doesn't have a big bag day one, I can tell you there's literally <laughs> not a school anywhere in this lake. Yeah, because he's probably found it. He's been idling for weeks, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so obviously ledge fishing is a pattern, but it's also pretty spot specific. You got to find that school in that spot. Uh, in this situation, is Kentucky Lake a pattern lake where if you figure out what they're doing, you can do it all over? I mean, it's a massive lake. It's got some unique zones, but can you run that all over, do you think? Yeah, it's definitely a pattern lake. And last year, it was more spot specific because it was just starting. So right, they're about... getting offshore. Yep, but yeah. normally, I mean, you you run spot, 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 and you find the school that's fresh. Same with the shallows, and it's a little bit of a dual-edged sword because this place is so big. And in summertime, you take these humongous three mile long creeks and those fish almost all of them pull out and they'll get a one specific spot right. as a school and you really hammer them right now there are cypress trees there's yellow flowers yep. there's bushes rock clay offshore docks i mean there's just way too many options and it's hard for guys to really just get them stacked up where you can get those huge bags gotcha. so i think the whole the whole field is going to have limits and catch a lot of fish the problem is just sitting in one spot and just hammering them is going to be hard. They're so spread out. Gotcha. Well, Tom makes a great point. Kentucky Lake's known for its ledges, but it is chock full of great shallow cover and a lot of options. I know you spent a lot of time here over the years. A lot of people maybe don't realize that. Not just an offshore guy. You know how to catch them here year round. So I think we'll probably see. Tom has a trick up his sleeve, I have a feeling. So check it <laughs> out here. So. Getting things started off tomorrow. <laughs> All right, we caught up with Marcus Sikora here, and uh, Marcus, former BFL All-American champion, and you won your All-American championship on the Tennessee River. Now we're here at Kentucky Lake. A little different pond. It was Wheeler, right? Uh, Wilson. 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 I'm sorry, it's Wilson. A little yep. bit different pond, but a lot of similarities. Of course, you won that tournament in the summertime when the offshore bite was going, and you are a structure fisherman. You say, that's not what's happening here this week right now. 
Well, that's not what I'm keying in, to be honest with you. The one time that I've never been able to come here is uh, whenever it's flooded in the bushes, and I love flipping. So all of my time that I'm spending right now, it's basically just beating the bank. There's a lot of fish that I think are still yet to come is what I'm hoping for. Okay. You have to believe that. Um, some fish I def definitely think are done and some fish I think are sitting right now. But I just wanted to come here to flip bushes, so yeah. that's what I'm all in on. Okay. Well, you got the coasters on. Uh, yep. Is it clear enough to see? Are you able to do any sign fishing or is it not quite set no, out that way? No, no. You know, the Tennessee River, it's always got a little bit of color to it. You know, you can get in some of these areas and it'll be crystal clear. But I think what happened is the ones that came up to sit, I think they started sitting and then the lake came up. So you can barely see the spot. Gotcha. Gotcha. And if you really, really sit there, you might be able to see something moving. But I'm not seeing enough to get locked on to, okay. to even put it in play. Well, there's a lot of water out there. So, you know, if you've got a hot area, I feel like the guys can spread out. But have you had much pressure in your areas where you've been practicing? Or you think if you find an area you can kind of have it to yourself. Yeah, I think so. I think it's great. I think there's a lot of guys that are wanting to find them out there on the main river and stuff like that. So there's a lot of guys looking on the early structure stuff. There's some guys in the bay looking for the bay bite. And then there's guys like me who are just getting lost in a flooded patch of willows and <laughs> yeah. brush somewhere. Gotcha. <laughs> are you banking on a couple areas or are you thinking maybe there's a pattern you can kind of unravel as the week goes on? No, just personally, I'm fishing a little bit further south uh, from here. I've never been there before. Um, so I've just really enjoyed it. The water's got a little bit more color to it mm -hmm. um, and it just seems like the lake level right now it's a little bit flatter so you get a little more stuff in the water it okay. seems like. Well we're, we're taking off here in Paris so we're a good ways down the lake but you can still go a long way south all the way to New Johnsonville some of those famous areas where guys catch yeah. uh, some big stringers so uh, we'll see how it goes we haven't had a weight estimate from any of the guys we talked to yet what are you feeling from your uh, your practice now, like a winning weight and maybe a top 10 weight? Well, it all depends on if those guys find them on the main river. If they find them on the main river, it's just wide open, you know, they're going to smash them. But, but you know, everything I've been doing, it's been, you know, I'd be happy with, I think, 15, 16 pounds a day would uh, would get me started in a good way, and mm -hmm. I'd be happy with that. Have a chance to make the top 10, you think? Have a chance to make the top 10 somewhere in that low 30 pound range. Okay. It may take 45 to lead or more, but I think, you know, what I'm seeing, low 30s will get you in. Alrighty. Well, you heard it from Kentucky Lake. It's a ledge lake, but he He's not banking on this week. He is going to the bank. Marcus Sikora, we're going to see how it shakes out this week. All right, we're finishing things off here at practice with Terry Bolton. And Terry, you are a Kentucky Lake local, but you just told me that you're not approaching this tournament as a local. You're looking at some water that you possibly haven't ever fished before, or at least haven't seen in a while. Yes, that's correct. I said when I entered this tournament that I was going to come down here and stay and fish south of this Paris Landing Bridge here and kind of take it like it was a new lake and uh, I don't know just you know as, as I've fished the lake so many years a lot of times it you know it's kind of refreshing to go do something new and I, th I really thought when I signed up for this event we're gonna have a lot of high water and it would be pretty simple mm -hmm. you know but as you can see TVA found out we were having a bass tournament <laughs> and they dropping the water on us so we're hoping I'm hoping this rain right here sets over us for a day because I really would like some yeah. more water in this lake well you've been flipping these bushes for years maybe not here like you said but right. when that water comes up that bite we know can be tremendous but right. when it's not quite up there and they're in this sort of spawn phase which with you know they're spawning or maybe getting ready to right. spawn What's the fallback plan if, if it's not up there in the bushes? Well, there's a shad spawn going on right now, a pretty big shad okay. spawn, and that's that's a pretty good program. Uh, you know, possibly somebody if you could find the right bank, pocket, docks, whatever, a hard object, I believe you can catch a limit really quick. Okay. And, and it's, it's out there. I haven't found it, uh, but I think that's a fallback plan. Um, you know, offshore typically is not i never have fished offshore i tried a little bit you know some points and things but i never do fish offshore in april gotcha well conditions like this are good for a shad spawn in the morning right it extends that bite that's right i think tomorrow you know, we have some weather but i think tomorrow it's supposed to be sunny so that might go away pretty quick uh, a fallback plan it sounds like would be a good thing to have can you just go out there and and, and junk fish and catch enough shallow you think to compete or do you really have to be dialed in on something right no now? i think you can go junk fish and, and catch enough to compete I, I think we're in a phase of a lot of fish are spawning right now mm -hmm. and that's the problem i think a lot of these fish are spawning we've had a they're not interested in eating and i think a lot of them are spawning in places that they're really hard to target they're spawning out and deeper off the okay. bank you know, and I think that's really what has fishing a little more difficult right now. It's, is that typical of a Kentucky Lake spawn? I mean, this is known as an offshore lake. Those fish seem like they're on the river year-round just right. about. Is that 
Do they typically spawn a little deeper, or is it just the way the conditions have lined up? In, in my lifetime, I've seen them gradually spawn. The lake, as it's gotten older, has, has cleared up, and, and, and okay. we're losing more buck brush uh, due to, you know, just age, people cutting them down, building homes, um, you know, the lake's getting older, um, less, you know, sediment. So the lake's getting clear, and that's allowing the fish to spawn deeper now. Okay. Tell me about the south end where you've been. Is there any grass starting to come up? Are we not even close to that yet? I've seen very little. Um, you know, I think usually May is the time that a lot of the grass starts. Okay. I've not really seen any yet. Uh, I looked in areas where I saw it last summer and didn't see it yet. Okay. So it sounds like all across the board, we're just real close to Kentucky Lake getting real good, but it might be a little bit of a challenge for a couple of days. What kind of weights do you think we might see right now? Because I haven't heard anybody say that they're really lightening it up. Yeah. I, you know, I think 15 pounds right now is a good catch. Uh, I think a top be, 10 weight? I, it possibly could yeah. be. Possibly could be a top 10 weight. You catch 17. Uh, you you can strut up there with okay. 17. I got you. Well, maybe we'll see one of those early schools show up and somebody will find that it. Is, that is a also bag. a possibility. And it's Kentucky Lake. There's enough five-pounders out here to go around. That's so, right. Uh, it sounds like we're going to have an interesting start to this thing and really see where this lake is in terms of the season and the spawn and the patterns here. That's right. And tomorrow's going to be a big day. Friday will be a big day. There's some storms coming this weekend, I think. So, right. getting to that top 10 is going to be critical. Watch for Terry Bolton hitting some new water this week. Gonna try and get it down here in Kentucky Lake.